Everyone should have seen this one coming a mile away. The following is a world-class bullshitters exclusive. A few weeks back, we made a video on Queen Cleopatra, the new stunning and brave Netflix series produced by Jada Pinkett Smith. The controversy surrounding the trailer was the fact that Cleopatra was portrayed as black, and audio in the trailer says that it doesn't matter what you were taught in school, my grandmother says Queen Cleopatra was black. This stirred up controversy, not just online, but so much in fact that the Egyptian government themselves got involved, and they're not too happy. Well, the show's out, and surprise, surprise, it sucks the big one. Queen Cleopatra, a new Netflix series and the second installment in the African Queens franchise produced by Jada Pinkett Smith, currently has a 1% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. The first installment of the series, African Queens, Jinga, released back in February to a similarly icy reception from audiences, though it fared better from critics than Queen Cleopatra has managed so far. African Queens, Njinga earned an 88% critic score from the review aggregate Rotten Tomatoes significantly higher than its 22% audience score. There isn't nearly as big a gap between the critics' score and the audience score for Queen Cleopatra, which has been panned by critics and fans alike. As of this writing, Queen Cleopatra has a mere 13% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, versus a shocking 1% audience score. The extremely low audience score can be explained by an apparent review-bombing effort by people who are upset about the casting of the titular Queen Cleopatra. Let's just stop for a second. Yes, the entire nation of Egypt is review-bombing this series. This is the dumbest shit ever. Let's continue. In the Netflix series, Cleopatra is portrayed by Adele James, a black woman which has upset... <laughs> a black woman which has upset people in Egypt and reignited the debate about the ethnicity of the real-world historical figure. It's clear that the casting of Cleopatra is the primary reason why the series has been hit with so many extremely low audience scores. But, setting that aside, it seems that many aren't impressed with the show in general. Looking at some of the professional reviews that have been written about Queen Cleopatra since the series premiered on Netflix, has been criticized as being bland with lackluster performances. Even though Queen Cleopatra's Rotten Tomatoes score is clearly a result of a review bombing effort, it seems unlikely that it would have fared much better had there been no review bombing at all. <laughs> Finally, they're honest. The consensus seems to be that Queen Cleopatra is not a good show, regardless of the casting controversy, and a clear step down from African Queen's Najinga. It will be interesting to see if there's a third season of the show, and if so, how it fares compared to African Queen's Najinga and Queen Cleopatra. Unfortunately, Queen Cleopatra it was a swing and a miss for Netflix, but the streaming giant has plenty of other exciting new projects on the way for subscribers to check out. Yeah, I don't care. Look, folks, I had a video about this for the weekend where the review score sat at 20% with no audience scores whatsoever, and we're going to put that at the end of this one, but look... All of this crap, we made a video about a month ago, and the producer back then made excuses about how this was massage noir. This was the internal hatred, racism, bigotry, and misogyny of the audience. The producer then goes on to state that the Elizabeth Taylor film needs to be rectified. Like we said back then, lady, that's a film from 50 plus 60 years ago at this point, I believe. Who cares what they did 60 years ago? This is the present, where facts actually matter. Times have changed, things are different, and according to history, Cleopatra wasn't black. But don't you dare say that or someone's grandma on the internet is going to get pissed off at you. Look, this whole thing just shows you the ignorance of Netflix. This woke entertainment or whatever you want to call it, this politically charged garbage, this just bad entertainment across the board. Well, it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense, and now it's not even any good. The critic score has dropped by 7% since we made the last video. And in a moment, when we go back and check that one out, you're going to hear me refer to it as 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. Nuh uh, not anymore. It's now down to 13%. And we should play a game of limbo with Queen Cleopatra. Simply put, how low can you go? If you're at 1% with audience scores and 13% with critics, I'd love to see the critic score drop to 9, any single digit, honestly, because this goes to show you that you don't make this kind of crappy entertainment. You race-baited people into talking about it, and now that they're talking about it, it actually sucks. Jada Pinkett Smith, you suck. Not only did she ruin Will Smith, she ruined entertainment across the board. Have you ever seen any of her movies? I have, and they stink. Try watching Scream 2. That's a horror movie, and I've never seen a shittier performance in a horror movie, and I've seen a lot. Sleepaway Camp 2, The Burning, you name it, I've watched it. But her death in Scream 2 is next level bad. Just like Queen Cleopatra. It's sitting at 1% on Rotten Tomatoes, and... Are you surprised? I'm not. I could have seen this coming a mile away. That's why I was prepared to talk about this. But back then it was at a whopping 20% and now it's down to 13. 
Audiences do care about historical accuracy, but something that's even more important than being 100% accurate is looking like the thing is supposed to be. It goes across all genres of entertainment right now. There's a push to make Superman black. People don't want that. There's a push to make James Bond black. People really don't want that one as well. Comic books change characters, ethnicities, and races all the time to sell more books to nobody because they print the books and they don't sell the books. They just sit there and rot. And if Queen Cleopatra was a physical product, it would be on store shelves forever, collecting dust. Entertainment companies need to get their heads out of their asses and stop producing shit like this. If you have critics that hate your shit, and you have audiences that hate your shit, well then you just have pure shit. But let's check out what I said a couple of days ago, because then I compared Queen Cleopatra to another wonderfully accurate show, Ancient Aliens. On Rotten Tomatoes, Queen Cleopatra sits at a stunning and brave 20% rotten from critics, with no audience score whatsoever. It's not accurate enough to be a historical documentary, and it's not interesting enough to be a dramatic series. According to the critics, it fails in every aspect. Most of the actors are phoning it in, and there's very little reason to keep watching. It sounds like a season of ancient aliens. You know, the show that tries to convince us that aliens built the pyramids, impregnated early humans, and were responsible for the Bermuda Triangle, and pretty much every other historical achievement through time. Yeah, that show. Interestingly enough, ancient aliens has been accused of wiping away non-white cultural experiences, I don't get it either. By making Cleopatra black, in spite of what history states, is doing the exact same thing. It's replacing ignorance with more ignorance. Such is the case with Queen Cleopatra, except there's no one as exciting as this guy. The show lacks historical credibility, entertainment, and pretty much every reason for existing, except to placate the ego of Jada Pinkett Smith. Even the claims of racism aren't holding up as the show falls apart. Queen Cleopatra is an example of people rallying together to defeat ignorance and stupidity. Today, it's nice that people can agree over anything, let alone agree about something so racially charged. People will make excuses for bad things because they represent something they like. Thankfully, this isn't the case with Queen Cleopatra. People don't like revisionist history, and people don't like bad content. That's the case with Queen Cleopatra, plain and simple. Unless you're the actor who plays the titular role. Though there has been a loud backlash from Egyptian nationals, including the country's government itself, towards Netflix's race-swapping of their history for the Queen Cleopatra docuseries, its star, Adele James, cares very little about any of it, as she believes that all of it is based on nothing more than a mix of self-hatred and, of course, racism. James broke her silence on the topic during the recent appearance on the 79th episode of the Wayne Ayers podcast. Asked by the eponymous host for her opinion on the fact that people are mad about Cleopatra being blackwashed, the British actress replied, Blackwashing isn't a thing, is it? At this point, a bit of technical difficulties caused some of James's responses to be cut off, but when her microphone kicked back in, she could be heard asserting that, I find it said that people are either so self-loathing or so threatened by the blackness that they feel the need to do that, to separate Egypt from the rest of the continent. Following a brief discussion about her process preparing for the overall role, Ayer then inquired with James about whether or not the fact that nobody has seen it yet but everybody has bashed it has been the biggest career obstacle for you. There was absolutely a lot of people saying very horrible things, but it definitely wasn't everyone, she said. I think that it's so important to remember that, like, in the grand scheme of things, there were some people who lost their minds over it, but there are a lot of really positive responses immediately as well. And it's remained. It's consistent. People are excited. I'm getting messages all the time. No, you ain't! But this is the biggest thing I've had to deal with in the public sphere, she then noted. It's the most I've had to navigate personally as an actress. This has definitely elevated my profile considerably on an international scale. WRONG! The biggest show I had before this was a television program here in the UK that does have repeats in other part of Europe. But several years down the line, in the UK it's big, but outside the UK, it's not so big. So this is like a whole nother scale of project for me. Ayers then broached the topic of Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Archaeology's recent criticism of the Netflix series as competing with the simplest historical facts and the writing of historians, to which James responded with a dismissive laughter. Yeah, I know I shouldn't laugh, but it's quite funny, the actress explained her knee-jerk response. It's quite funny the level of threat that you must feel on my skin tone to file a lawsuit against an entire streaming service. That, to me, is really extreme. It's a really extreme action. James would then reveal that in her defense of Netflix's race swapping was rooted in contemporary notions of race politics, claiming that the response from the Egyptian people was 100% fundamentally rooted in racism, which is a very modern ideology. The Egyptians don't think about race like we do, because race has only really been contextualized since we understand it since the transatlantic slave trade, she argued. That's not how people thought back then, right? So it's really bizarre to me, and I find it very sad to them. Closing out their conversation about the Netflix series, Ayers ultimately asked James what she hoped critics could gain from watching the series. 
Well, if they watch it, if they give us some hate views, I hope that they will understand that it's a debate, it's a conversation, not a definitive answer, said James. And actually, the research on it is really interesting, and the people talking about it are really interesting. But I'm sure they'll discover quite quickly what the series is about much more than that. The response is not surprising. Of course it's the fault of the audience, of course it's the fault of the Egyptian government. Remember folks, if you don't like something because it's inaccurate, you're the problem, according to this queen. As critics continue to pile on this show, fans continue to ignore it. Queen Cleopatra just goes to show that the creators can't talk their way out of bad content. So folks, what do you think of this whole Queen Cleopatra situation? Again, this woman likes to deflect. These types of people that are involved with these garbage products can't come up with anything but blame. You must hate yourself. You must be a racist. You must be a bigot. You must be a fucking moron. You're an actor. You don't even speak your own words for your job. So why am I supposed to take these ones with any seriousness? I'm not going to. Lady, the problem everyone has is the fact that it's wrong. It's like 1 plus 1 equals 17. I don't care what common core math bullshit you're a part of. That's not the fucking answer. It's 2. Sorry. Sorry to challenge your feelings. And it's the same with this. People aren't as racist as you'd like to think. The internet paints it that way so you can get away with bullshit and bad behaviors. But look, you come off as an asshole in this interview and you expect people to what? Go hate watch your show? Hell no. People don't want it. Feminists don't want it. Black people don't want it. And I can speak on that one. Fuck you. Nobody wants this show. We're not looking for Elizabeth Taylor White from 1960 whatever, but it's also 2023 and we're pushing for accuracy in every element, but because this feels right to make Cleopatra black, we're going to go with it? Well, from now on here on this channel, you're going to refer to me as King Charles because I feel like I'm the King of England. That's how it works, right? I feel like everyone should give me $5 right now and I feel like I should go buy Finland because it feels like it's my just due. I deserve this, just like this woman deserves nothing but positive reacts, and this show deserves nothing but praise from critics. <laughs> I find it great that it's not even the fans that are shitting on this show. It's the critics. All of this for what? Nothing. You lose. Good day. Goodbye. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from world-class bullshitters, and there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no. They're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine, and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS, and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff, so if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel.